Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Logic. The modern square of opposition is the topic of this video. In order to understand this video, you may have to watch my previous videos on Logic. Now the modern square of opposition looks like this. And these letters represent the four standard form categorical propositions. And remember Venn diagrams from the last video? Well, when we add Venn diagrams to the modern square of opposition, it looks like this. Now look at the Venn diagram for the A and O propositions. The diagram for the A proposition asserts that the left-hand part of the S circle is empty. But on the other hand, the diagram for the O proposition asserts that the left-hand part of the S circle is not empty. So these two diagrams are exactly opposite of each other, which means that the A and O propositions contradict each other. Well, next, let's look at the Venn diagrams for E and I propositions. The diagram for the E proposition asserts that the overlap area is empty, but on the other hand, the diagram for the I proposition asserts that the overlap area is not empty. Once again, we see that these two diagrams are exactly opposite of each other. And this means that the E and I propositions contradict each other. When two statements are contradictory, it means that they necessarily have opposite truth values. So if a certain A proposition is true, then the corresponding O proposition is necessarily false. Since these propositions are not related to the E and I propositions, the E and I propositions have undetermined truth value. The undetermined truth value can be represented with a question mark. And if a certain I proposition is false, then the corresponding E proposition is necessarily true. The A and O propositions have undetermined truth value. Let's work a few practice problems. Practice problem one. If this A proposition is false, what is the truth value of the other propositions? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! O is true. E and I are undetermined. Next practice problem. If the E proposition is true, what is the truth value of the other propositions? The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! I is false. A and O are undetermined. Next practice problem. If O is false, what is the truth value of the other propositions? The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! A is true. E and I are undetermined. Next practice problem. If I is true, what is the truth value for the other propositions? The answer will appear in 3, 2, 1. Ding! E is false. A and O are undetermined. A very good job on those practice problems. Now let's use the modern square of opposition to test some inferences. We'll check to see if the inferences are valid. We'll take a look at this inference. We first begin by assuming that the premise is true. Since the premise is an O proposition, we will enter a T beneath the O in the square. Next, since O is true, we know that A is necessarily false. So we enter an F above the A in the square. Since no other inferences are possible, the E and I propositions have undetermined truth value. And finally, we check the conclusion. The conclusion claims that the A proposition is false. As we check the square, we see that indeed A is false. The conclusion of the inference is true, so the inference is valid. Here's another inference, and as usual, we assume that the premise is true, and the premise asserts that an A proposition is false. So we enter an F above the A in the square. Next, we see that since A is false, O is true. E and I have undetermined truth value, as no other inferences are possible. And finally, we check the conclusion. Does it match the square? Well, the conclusion claims that the E proposition is true, but when we look at the square, 
we see that the E proposition has undetermined truth value. So the inference is invalid. All right, let's work a few practice problems. Practice problem number one. For the premise, what truth value do you enter into the square of opposition? Press pause if you need to. The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! A is true. The premise is an A proposition, and we assume that it's true. Next, what is the truth value for the other propositions? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! O is false, because it is the contradictory of A, and E and I are undetermined. Next, what does the conclusion claim? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The conclusion claims that O is false. Since the conclusion matches the square, is the inference valid or invalid? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! Valid, because the conclusion matches the square. Next practice problem. For the premise, what truth value do you enter into the square? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! E is false. We assume that the premise is true, and it says that an E proposition is false. Next, what is the truth value for the other propositions? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! I is true, and A and O are undetermined. Next, what does the conclusion claim? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The conclusion claims that an O proposition is true. Since the conclusion does not match the square, is the inference valid or invalid? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! The inference is invalid because it does not match the square. A very good job on those practice problems. Now you know how to test an inference using the modern square of opposition. But now, let's see how to use the Venn diagram to test an inference. Take a look at this inference. First, we draw a diagram for the premise. Next, we draw a diagram for the conclusion. Since the conclusion asserts that an A statement is false, we do the opposite of what we would do if the statement were true. If all A or M were true, we would shade the left-hand part of the A circle. But since the statement is false, we place an X in this area. Now we look at the diagrams to see if the information in the conclusion diagram is contained in the premise diagram. Well, in the conclusion diagram, there's an X in the left-hand part. And since there's an X in the left-hand part to the premise diagram, we know that the inference is valid. Let's look at another inference. Well, first we draw diagrams for the premise and conclusion. Then we look to see if the information in the premise diagram is contained in the conclusion diagram. The conclusion diagram has a shaded overlap area, but the premise diagram does not, so the inference is not valid. All right, let's work a few practice problems. After drawing and labeling the circles, what must you do to diagram the premise? The answer will appear in three, two, one. Ding! You shade an area because the statement is false. Next, what area must you shade? The answer in three, two, one. Ding! Area two. Next, what must you do to diagram the conclusion? The answer in three, two, one. Ding! Shade an area. Universal statements always require shading. Next, what area must be shaded? The answer in three, two, one. Ding! The left-hand part of the C circle. Now the diagrams are finished. Is the information in the conclusion diagram contained in the premise diagram? The answer in three, two, one. Ding! The diagrams have different shaded areas. Is the inference valid or invalid? The answer in three, two, one. Ding! Invalid. Congratulations! You have now completed this lesson.
you are another step closer to receiving your blue belt in logic. See my other videos on logic, comment, like, share, and subscribe, and have a great day.